Hello everyone and welcome to the first class in our series of courses on the Backyard Orchard. Uh, the first course is on citrus and as you can see there's a lot of citrus that we can grow in this area, a lot of different types and so uh, for the introduction to the course we're going to go through the different types and the characteristics of these different types. And I'm really glad to be here, aren't you? <laughs> So, what is citrus? Well, the genus citrus, it's the citrus plants themselves, they're native to Southeast Asia, uh, East Asia, Melanesia, Australia, all that area. And essentially, any plant in the citrus genus is a small to medium evergreen tree. They can grow anywhere from eight feet tall to 50 feet tall. Uh, they have alternately arranged leaves uh, with an entire, and the leaves themselves, that's one thing I love about citrus, you crush those leaves up and they smell fantastic. Anything that's in the citrus genus has that same aromatic leaf. And almost all commercially available citrus trees are grafted. And of course later on we're going to talk about grafting and rootstock and why is that so important that what citrus trees are grafted. Uh, the most common rootstock that's used is the trifoliate orange or some hybrid that uses the trifolia orange as its parentage. Uh, trifolia orange used to be classified in the genus Poncirus, and it was Poncirus trifoliata. Recently they've changed that and it's now called Citrus trifoliata. Most people just call it trifoliata or trifolia orange. Uh, the fruits of the citrus, they're botanically called Hesperidium, and they can vary greatly in size depending on the variety but all have a leathery rind and juicy acidic flesh. And citrus is the most common backyard fruit tree grown in our area. And when I say our area, I'm talking about southern Louisiana, greater New Orleans area. It is the most common backyard fruit tree. Now the different types of citrus that are available in Louisiana, these are all different types that you can purchase to grow in your backyard in Louisiana. A little later on, we're going to talk about why there are some varieties you can't purchase to put in your backyard, and that has to do with uh, diseases and insects and quarantines set up by the USDA, but we'll go into that in more detail later. But essentially, the different types that are, are available in Louisiana, we have the Satsuma, uh, Citrus Yunsui, and that is one that has um, a lot of grow acreage grown in Louisiana commercially, but is also a very common and very popular backyard tree. Uh, this is what the Satsuma is. We have the sweet oranges, uh, citrus sinensis, uh, grapefruits, citrus paradisi, uh, kumquats. That one's not as commonly grown um, because kumquat is a fruit that either you love it or you hate it. That seems to be the case. Uh, but a kumquat, citrus japonica, that one can be grown in Louisiana. The lemon, citrus limon, and lime. When we get to that one, you're going to see that one's a little bit different because lime has multiple different species that we can grow in Louisiana, but they're all limes, common name, but they are different species actually, from uh, citrus orantifolia, Citrus hystrix, citrus latifolia, these are all classified as limes, but we can grow those. Then there's the mandarins, citrus reticulata, tangerine, citrus tangerina, uh, the tangelos, those aren't grown as commonly in backyards in Louisiana, but you can grow them, citrus tangelo, pomelo, citrus maxima, and it certainly lives up to its name. It's probably the largest fruited citrus uh, there is, and it can be grown uh, you can get those trees in Louisiana. Once again, that one's one that's not commonly grown in backyards. And the calamondron, Citrus macrocarpa. And that one is one that has grown more so than some of the others, but it's grown primarily in most people's yards as an ornamental. Uh, even though the fruit is great, you can use the calamondron fruit uh, for lots of different things but it's not grown as commonly for the fruit as it is for its ornamental value. Uh, what about the citrus name? Now citrus, it is truly botanically complex and the reason it is such a complex genus is because 
Members of the citrus genus, they hybridize freely. So growing in the wild, the citrus hybridizes with each other. Uh, you're growing them in your backyard. If you actually collect the seed from a lot of those, you've got hybrids that are being produced. And over the years, they've been crossed back and forth here and there. And only recently has anyone started to do research to try to unravel the genus. Uh, but the majority of the cultivated species are hybrids that involve uh, parents from one of these four. The citron, Citrus medica, the mandarin, Citrus reticulata, the pomelo, Citrus maxima, and macrantha. Now this is one you probably haven't heard of, but it is uh, common in the parentage of a lot of citrus, Citrus macrantha, and it's one that is, is wild in the origin of citrus. Uh, and it's used a lot in the parentage of different citrus varieties. Uh, one important thing about citrus is its cold hardiness. Now of all those different types that we can grow, this chart here shows you going from the most cold hardy to the least cold hardy. And these are the ones that we can grow. And kumquat is the most cold hardy, lime is the least cold hardy. And as you can see, the kumquats, the kalamondans, the satsumas, they can withstand temperatures as low as 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The mandarins, the tangerines, tangelos, okay, they're a little less cold hardy. Uh, they can just withstand the temperatures into the low 20s. And then the ones that are required to be a little warmer are the orange, the pomelos, the grapefruits, only into the mid 20s. And then, of course, the lemons and the limes, both of those are the most cold sensitive. Lemons can withstand Temperature is sometimes into the high 20s. Limes, only about 29 degrees. If it drops below 29 degrees uh, at any point, you're gonna have a tr lime tree that's damaged. One thing that is important to know, though, is that no matter how cold hardy the tree itself is, the fruit of all of these is essentially the same. If it drops below 26 degrees to 28 degrees uh, for several hours at night, the fruit is going to freeze and be damaged. So if you're growing any of these and it's going to get really cold, one thing you want to do is remove all the fruit before that cold weather hit. Because if you leave it on the tree and it gets into this range for several hours, you're going to lose your fruit. Uh, some additional factors that will affect the cold hardiness of the citrus trees. Now, what I gave you was a generalization of the cold hardiness of the different citrus types. But there are other factors that will affect whether the tree you have in your backyard will survive that 25 degree weather that you're about to get. So some of these factors are the lowest freezing temperature reached. So if it gets to 29 degrees, as you saw, there's quite a few citrus that can handle that. But if it drops below that, say down in the 25 range, now there are some citrus that you have in your backyard that won't make it. So the lowest freezing temperature reached and how long it is at that minimum temperature. If it drops down to 29 degrees for about three or four hours and then drops way on down into the 25, 24 range, but it's only there for an hour and then quickly warms back up to the high 20s or low 30s, then a lot of the trees that can't take that cold weather will survive that one hour drop in the temperature. But if it drops and stays for several hours, then it's important. How long was that cold temperature? And another condition is, did the plant get a chance to adjust to those cold temperatures? Now, if you go through several weeks where the temperature is slowly and gradually dropping each night from the mid 30s, down into the low 30s, down into the upper 20s, down into the mid 20s, down into the low 20s, even down into the high teens, if the tree has a chance to adjust to those temperatures slowly, it can withstand a lot colder temperatures. A tree that has a chance to adjust can withstand temperatures perhaps down around 19 degrees. However, if it drops from the mid 40s mid 30s down into the low or upper upper teens in a three day period, the tree doesn't have a chance to adjust. So a tree that normally could take that cold temperature 
could be burned or even killed by that sudden drop. So that's important to remember. And the age of the plant. The younger the tree, the less cold it can handle, just simply because the tree is smaller. And of course, the health of the tree. The healthier the tree, the hardier the tree. If you have um, bad fertilization, insects or diseases, then your tree isn't healthy and it cannot take the cold as readily as a healthy tree. And of course, the tree rootstock. Uh, we talked to you about trees almost all being grafted. The rootstock itself imparts cold hardiness to a lot of the citrus. A citrus tree that can normally only survive down into the upper 20s with a cold hardy rootstock, it could survive down into the mid to the low 20s simply because that's what the rootstock is doing for it. Citrus flowering is another important thing to know because most citrus varieties will only flower once and it's usually in the early spring, maybe March or April. And that would be like the oranges, the grapefruits, the mandarins, tangelos, tangerines. Uh, now this single flowering for satsumas, they will usually flower maybe a, a month or so later, maybe late March, early May. Uh, kumquats, when it gets cold, they are very cold hardy, but they also go to sleep and really sleep soundly. So they wake up a little bit later in the spring. It might be April or May before the kumquats will flower. And then the big oddballs are the lemons and limes because they will have a strong spring flush of flowers, maybe March, April, uh, but they will flower throughout the year. And it's not uncommon to see a lemon tree that has flowers, little tiny green fruit, mid-sized green fruit, and harvestable, ready to mature fruit growing on the same tree at the same time. And uh, the same with limes. So they're a little bit different. But the wonderful thing about citrus is all of them have this beautifully sweet, fragrant flowers. That fragrance can't be imitated and there's nothing better than having uh, citrus trees in the yard and walking out and just being uh, intoxicated by that wonderful sweet fragrance. And one thing that we get a lot of calls about every year are people will call about their citrus tree said it had hundreds or even thousands of flowers on it, but now it's only got maybe in that a hundreds or less fruit. What's the problem? Well, Almost all citrus varieties will flower profusely during their period, but on average, only 0.1 to 3% of those flowers will actually set fruit and carry through to maturity because the tree is putting out lots of flowers with the hopes of getting lots of fruit, but it knows how many fruit it can handle. So the tree itself is the one that determines how many fruit it's gonna produce. And on average, from 0.1 to 3% of the flowers that you actually see during the flowering period will make fruit and actually mature. One important thing about pollination with citrus trees is the majority of varieties are self-fertile. All the flowers have both male and female parts and so one tree will give you plenty of fruit. It doesn't need a pollinator. However, there are two different types of citrus that are an exception to this rule. The tangelos and the tangerines. They do require a pollinator. So if you're gonna grow tangelos and tangerines, you're gonna to have to have at least two trees um, with different varieties so that you can get the cross-pollination. Without cross-pollination, you won't get uh, any or at least very, very few fruit from your tangelos and your tangerines. Uh, another thing that you notice are a lot of the citrus varieties are seedless. Well, if they're seedless, that means they're parthenocarpic. They're actually producing fruit without pollination. Navel oranges and satsumas are two readily recognized examples of fruit that is seedless. And so these flowers are producing fruit without pollination. And we always get lots of calls about this, commonly known as the June drop. When your citrus flowers in the spring, a lot of those flowers get pollinated. A lot of them will drop off. However, come June, mid-season, the tree 
kind of takes a stock of itself and realizes, I got way too many fruit. I cannot produce enough food to carry all of these fruit to maturity. So there will be a huge drop, sometimes small, sometimes huge. Usually it's huge and we'll get called about it. What's wrong with my citrus? All the fruit are dropping off and they're just little tiny fruit. They haven't had a chance to mature. Well, that's the June drop. The tree is dropping that many fruit so that it can produce a good harvest of nice sized juicy sweet fruit later on. As we mentioned before, only about 0.1 to 3% of all the flowers produced end up being mature fruit. During flowering, it will drop some of the flowers. During a June drop, it will drop some of the small immature fruit because the tree knows what it can handle. Now, before you purchase a citrus tree to put in your backyard, there are some things you need to consider. One, citrus trees require at least eight hours of daily sunlight and very good drainage. If you don't have a location like that to put your tree in, don't get a citrus tree. You're gonna be disappointed. Your tree is gonna suffer. We're gonna get lots of calls and eventually you're gonna replace it with something that can live in the location you're trying to grow the citrus. Citrus can be grown in containers and moved around to take advantage of the different uh, locations in your garden. So are you planning to grow a citrus tree in the container? If you are, then you need to realize it's gonna to have to be probably at least 20 gallons in size. So you're gonna need a large container. You're gonna to have to be able to move the container around. So if you're gonna grow citrus in container, keep that in mind. Where do you live? What type of winters do you have? Now, we had the chart showing you the cold hardiness of the different citrus types. So, if you're gonna grow citrus in your backyard, does it get cold enough, usually in the wintertime, that you're gonna to need to provide some protection for your tree if you're growing it in ground? If so, keep that in mind. Be prepared when the cold weather comes. Will you need to move your container tree inside? Well, if you're growing in a container, you can grow trees and citrus trees in New York or Michigan, as long as you know that you have a container and you have a place to move it when the cold weather comes. So how are you gonna move it? Where are you gonna put it when that cold weather comes? Citrus trees uh, need space to grow. So where are you gonna plant that citrus tree? Do you have plenty of space for it? If not, are you gonna to try to manage it and control the size of it by pruning it? That's more labor that's gonna be involved. Know the answer to this question before you decide to plant a citrus tree. If you've gone through all this and you say, yes, I got the spot, I'm ready for a citrus tree, then go ahead and choose the type and variety of citrus tree that you wanna plant. In later courses, we're going to go through the different types, different varieties that are available to you and how to plant your citrus tree to give it the best start and what you're going to do annually to keep your tree healthy and in good shape.